Hi, and welcome to the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today I want to talk about group punishment. All right, welcome back. I am Kale Hauser, and this is the Kale Hauser Leadership Secrets Podcast. Today I want to talk about group punishment. Uh, hopefully you heard yesterday's episode where I talked about the relationship between command and leadership. Uh, are you simply a commander or are you an actual leader in your organization? And one of the things that I touched on and spent a little bit extra time on was this concept of group punishment. Right. So as a reminder, a commander or a boss, somebody who relies strictly on their legal or financial authority to enact um, corrective action uses group punishment as a tool. They think that's an effective way to lead their organization. Okay. Uh, hopefully, if you listen to the episode, I got across my point how much I believe that is so wrong. That group punishment virtually is never the answer for corrective action in your organization, whether that's in a military platoon or squadron, or whether that is in, you know, your pizzeria or your office or whatever business that you are a part of, um, whatever model that prescribes to, or your group of realtors, that group punishment is not the case. Okay, so I wanted to expand on this a little bit because I do think it is an important uh, topic. I think it's one, as I'd mentioned, that we all understand that it's dumb, that it's not effective or it doesn't have the intended consequences usually. Um, but yet you see this enacted time and time again, especially in the military. Certainly I was, I was a, uh, I don't know if victim is the right word, but I was a participant in group punishment many times throughout my military career. Um, and I can honestly say, I cannot think of a single time where I was like, wow, this is awesome, man. I'm, I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to worry about that because guess what? I already wasn't doing that thing that caused the group punishment to be enacted by that one person, okay? So this type of corrective action and this way to um, bring about change in an organization, right? Because it comes from something negative. Somebody did done something wrong. Um, whether how extreme that may be, you know, will depend on the, the how extreme the group punishment is. Um, but this is leading by the example of the least common denominator. Okay, so this is a, a math term I like to use, the least common denominator. Uh, you should be familiar with it from your middle school math and algebra of you know how, how to divide and add and multiply fractions, right? You want to find the least common denominator that's common to everything. And the least is the lowest. And this applies to any organization. There is somewhere in your organization a least common denominator of that organization. They're the, the least productive, uh, the least um, agreeable to your organization. They are the ones that probably shouldn't be there to start with because they're the lowest performer. Um, they have usually the lowest goals, the lowest targets. Um, they, you know, again, produce the, the minimum, if anything at all. But you never want to bring your organization, which Let's just say it's up here at eye level, down to the least common denominator level, because that doesn't help anybody. Okay, it just pisses off everyone else, because you will have on the opposite of that your highest performers, your people that put in the most effort, they care the most, they get the most clients, they close the most deals, and when. As I'd mentioned, and when they realize that no matter what they do, no matter how awesome they are, how many goals they and targets they smash and exceed, that they're going to have to come in on Saturday just like the, you know, the John Doe sitting next to him that doesn't do any of those things to go through the same punishment in, in an effort to motivate that person to produce more or be better. That's going to do nothing but bring your, your top performers down. And guess what? Eventually, they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to bounce because no one wants to be a part of that. Okay. And you as the leader of your organization, whether in an in official military capacity or in the, in the civilian world in your organization, you have to understand this. Just because it was done to you and you're like, oh, yeah, I turned our organization around, da, 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 da. You have to understand the underlying aspects of that now as the leader. The benefits are nowhere near to outweigh the negatives of group punishment. Okay, so okay, a little bit of story time here. So when it, before I decided to start Kale Hauser Leadership, or I was in the, the very beginning stages of it and kind of formulating like, how, how do I do this? I had taken a job 
and it was a 100% commission based job as a closer for a real estate company. Um, well, not even a real estate company, but a, an advertising company that focused on real estate agents, right? So their, their big claim was they help real estate agent generate leads for selling and buying houses, which is totally awesome. It's a, it's a totally viable business model and everything. I was a, a quote unquote closer for this company and I would, essentially I would talk to these real estate agents as kind of the final, you know, this is a demo of our product and this is everything that our company will do for you and these are our guarantees and these are the results we took, right? So it's a sales position essentially. But it's 100% commission based. So I wasn't even an employee of this company. I was more of a, a what's called like a 1099 contractor if you want to look at it that way. And at some point, and every types, all these types of companies, and certainly probably in your company, you have what's called a, a CRM, and that's a way to track your customer interactions, right? Um, I forget exactly what CRM stands for, stands for, but like customer resource management or something along that ilk. But typically, right, phone numbers, addresses, emails, and a, and a history of, of when you contacted them and what was contacted about. So at some point, as this company, it was two, started by two brothers uh, during COVID, and they just exploded. Like they they went from you know a ten thousand dollar month to a three million dollar year. Okay, so so their their business was exploding. They were getting lots of customers, which and of course they needed to increase their sales force. And I was a part of that influx. Well, as with anything, as you get an increase in personnel, you get an increase or a decrease in expertise level, right? Because they built this business on basically themselves and a few. Key key closers that were just really good at what they did. But now you've gone beyond the capacity of those like five people to be able to grow. Okay, so you need to hire on more people. And their training wasn't awesome, to be honest. It was essentially read through these scripts and these are the common objections that you're gonna run into and how to handle those, right? It's pretty basic. Um, but they did, to their credit, they had a, a, a meeting every morning uh, that went through role playing and how to handle different types of customers, um, you know, to bring up questions and, hey, these are something I ran into last night, I didn't know how to handle. So to their credit, that was awesome. But what ultimately caused me, it was really kind of the final ringing bell of Kayla Hauser leadership to get it up and going, was at one, of, one of the brothers, the owners, sent out this email to all of us. And even since I had come on, they had hired on like 10 more guys. Um, sent out an email to everybody saying, okay, we're, we're noticing a lack of people filling out their CRM. So filling out, you know, who they called, when they called, if they left a message, you know, kind of just the basic details so they could have a, a tracking. So whenever somebody picked up that contact, they'd know what had been done or not. Um, so from now on, if you fail to fill out your CRM, whether it be for getting a phone number or, or really anything, they didn't clarify to what level, you will be deducted $100 from your monthly paycheck. And I go, and it took me a second, right? It, leading back to, have you ever been caught so off guard? If he'd have said this to my face, I would have been like, excuse me, like this is not computing. So I even had my wife, Liz, come over and read the email just to make sure that I wasn't interpreting it in some weird way and that I was understanding what their intent of it was. And she goes, yeah, they're going to charge you $100. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so is this per instance? Is this once? Like I could do it once and I'm going to get charged $100 anyway, so don't even bother filling out the CRM. Like what, it, you know, it raised all these questions. So I emailed back to the owner who had sent this out and like, okay, you need to clarify this because, you know, this isn't making sense on its surface. Um, and he goes, yeah, you know, we're just noticing a lot of people not filling it out. So we're going to charge you a hundred dollars or deduct a hundred dollars from your paycheck. And I go, nope, not happening. I because you know, while certainly not a top performer at that time in that company, I know that I'm responsible for myself and that when you give me a task, especially as part of a job, that I'm gonna complete it and I'm not gonna be holding to the least common denominator of the organization uh, and being charged $100 for a 100% commission sales position anyway. Like that's, there's no way this is happening. And I even, going back again to are you willing to tell somebody that they're wrong to their face so this was my boss this was the owner or the co-owner between these two brothers of the company and i said this is wrong what you're doing this is not right we are 100 percent commission employees for you to deduct from our paycheck is wrong and the way you're going about this is wrong you know so he's definitely went the immediate stick route instead of the carrot route uh, and there are merits to that um, for different scenarios but this was absolutely the wrong way to do it so ultimately i ended up you know quitting and, and withdrawing from that company because it became 
if this is their go-to, then man, if I screw up anything, right? So now you're walking on eggshells and worried more about, did I fill out all my CRM than I am about learning to be a better salesman or learning the product more or anything of that nature, right? You can kind of see how this could snowball and, and certainly is not conducive to creating a positive work environment when it's all based on punishment to start with, okay? Um, and in the military, certainly we've, if, especially if you've been in any branch of the military, we've been part of this group punishment. You know, think back to your basic training scenario days, right? Like, oh, somebody missed a turn on their march or, you know, the, their bed wasn't folded, sheets weren't folded exactly right or their socks weren't tucked right. So guess what? You're all doing push-ups or flutter kicks or whatever the case may be. Um, there was certainly other intentions in that as far as the military is concerned. And I, and I make kind of light of it because it's just going to happen, right? Even if the platoon or the squadron or the flight is absolutely perfect, you're going to get extra PT and push-ups and things. It's just the nature of it. But I can also think back to another time in my military career. So I was you know, stationed in Florida and I was part of a, a team. This is in my enlisted days. And we worked shift work. We were a 24-7, 365 days a year office. Okay. Um, and it, we worked in two-man teams and we had, you know, days... Um, swings and mid shift, right? So eight hour shifts uh, and working in two man teams at the time. So because of that, and this was right when the Air Force had kind of changed their uh, physical fitness policy and the requirements and the, the fitness test, it was a little bit more strenuous, even though to the other services it absolutely wasn't strenuous, but it was a little bit more than what the Air Force had previously been. And uh, our commander, our officer in charge, who I would consider a leader, he was, he was phenomenal, especially as he was one of the few that I would count as an actual leader in my military career, which is great because he was basically my first one as an, at an operational squadron. Um, he instituted a, hey, I know we're all doing shift work. You know, everyone is under all kinds of different schedules. No, but not everyone works the, the Monday through Friday office hour kind of kind of job here. So we're going to put this log up. You guys are all going to commit to working out on your own for three days a week. And you will sign this log saying that you did. Kind of the honor system. And like, hey, we understand you want to be here. You guys understand the consequences of failing your, your physical fitness test. So therefore, we're assuming that it is in your best interest to make sure that you do the things you need to as an adult to pass that physical fitness test, right? So run, push-ups, sit-ups, and your waist measurement. So don't go home and eat a box of donuts every day kind of thing. And we all readily raised our hand. Absolutely. Of course. So that had been going on for, you know, quite some time. We'd been signing out our logs and stuff. And then we had one guy, one airman. He fails his PT test. Okay. So he gets called up in front of our squadron commander, who was different than our, on our section commander, and he goes, Airman so-and-so, why did you fail your PT test? Well, sir, we don't do any sort of group PT, so I didn't have any accountability to do, to prepare for my PT test, so I failed it. Well, then that started the questions from our 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 squadron commander into our group commander and he found out we weren't doing group PT and that we were on the honor big boy system and that all changed real quick. So because of one guy who was already the least common denominator, if you could have guessed anyone in our squadron, it would have been him to fail his PT test, uh, even though he had been offered to help uh, you know, we, we had running partners if you needed that extra motivation to run and practice your run and sit-ups and push-ups. We even did them in the office, you know, when we were sitting there at 3 in the morning on shift. We're like, all right, let's knock out 50 push-ups, you know, whatever the case may be, to help each other and hold each other accountable, except for this one guy. Well, so then it went from on your own big boy program to total group. Unless you were physically sitting on shift at the time, you were there at 6 a.m. for group PT. Meaning, if you got off work at midnight that night before, guess where you were back at at 6 a.m. For, for PT, for group PT, you were there. It was this group punishment that created, it went from an organization that was relatively functioning and happy, we had high morale, we were all getting along, to now there was infighting, there was resentment, there was distrust, right? Because now here I am as a young airman at the time, being punished for something I didn't even do. I wasn't even in danger of pass not passing my physical fitness test. And here I am getting punished um, by virtue of getting my free time taken away uh, because of this one guy instead of him being handled by his supervisor. Uh, so I want to, again, drastically and as with as much emphasis as I can, steer you away from this type of mentality. Handle 
the least common denominator in your organization individually, right? If you need to bring other people in for encouragement, to teach, to educate, to help them, give it a shot. Give them a shot to, to rise up to your expectations, but certainly don't bring your entire organization down to their level. Uh, you will regret it. It won't last. The, your top performers won't stay with you in your organization because there'll be no future for them because inevitably there will always be a least common denominator. Um, and if you're just continually bringing your organization and your teams down to their level, it's, it's a losing uh, formula. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and you, you understand how against group punishment I am and really take the time when you when you have that knee-jerk reaction of bring everyone in here on Saturday, we're gonna go pull leads, this is unacceptable. Look at what that is is causing that mentality and it's causing that reaction. Is it is it indeed your entire organization like boycotted you, you know, like every single person, or is it one or two people that are your bad apples that you need to handle individually, um, whether you need to straight up fire them, get rid of them, or they need additional training. Um, be be the leader of your organization, not just the commander, not just the boss, okay? That's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of Kale Hauser leadership is to get you to be the leader and no longer the boss, okay? I trust that that's what you're here for and that's what you're listening for. I hope this uh, helped you in that journey to become a more uh, confident uh, leader, to become more connected to your team and, and inspirational to them in the way that you lead. I appreciate you spending your time. Shoot me an email at kale at kalehauserleadership.com. Make sure you visit kalehauserleadership.com. I really appreciate everything. And likes and subscribes are fantastic to help the channel kind of boost a little bit in the ratings, whether it be on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or CastBox. No matter where, no matter where you are at in the world, have a fantastic afternoon. I'll talk to you soon.